Sitting on the bank by a swamp Bucket, bone, and line Can I get a feed tonight? Cookies on the cold, go right And that wind shines through Them tall tea trees swinging in the breeze And then frogs sing that song That old big frogs, yeah, understand Well, I got that fire going Casting some scary shadows Swamp creatures sing And there's something in the dark And under a full moon That fog rolls in I'm up on the bank And I'm dancing And that moon shines through them tall tea trees swaying in the breeze and them frogs sing that song that only frogs yeah understand Something in the dark Sitting by a fire with me Then there was Papa Nan and Mom and Dad There was uncles and aunties and cousins and nephews and brothers and sisters And an old camp dog Chewing on someone's shoe ha! And that moon shines through Them tall tea trees swaying in the breeze Song that only frogs, yeah, understand. <coughs> Thinking on the years and time gone by, there's tears in my eyes. Cause I'm standing right there. Where that swamp used to be A lot of memories Sitting on a bank by a swamp Gala Fire And since the dawn of time, it's been a place of discussion, tool making, warmth, food, song, dance, and stories. was a film but I guess some of the crew was to plot somewhere out there on the road but 
Well, it started out as just good times with women, songs and gin. With drums and amps and beat up bands that doubled up as sin bins. United by a lust of life and the colour of our skin. We set a course for lands unknown, away from small town racism. Success came along with his mate excess, and delusion snuck in too. We built huge walls of cards and bets as Dortmark checks and cash rolled through. But money doesn't change all things And our WOMAD lies were wearing thin We started hanging out in bars to forget the war And the things we seen It said, all things must pass Empires never last Our lives just grains of sand in an hourglass in God's hands. And if what I eat is what I am, what dies for all those tears of spam? And if what I sow is what I reap, who feeds this monkey at my feet? I've been on the road, I forget how long. Told the missus I'd be home soon. A travelling man in troubled times. And cars and vans and mates of mine. A fallen star in a higher car. Trains, the planes, the bars, the stains. I'm feeling silly on stage tonight, like a small time boxer who's had too many fights and blows. What fires your passion when your passion's gone? If I've treated you badly, I'm sorry I was wrong. Can't find a way back now. So I soldier on.
I was working out in the station a long time now. And I just crawled into my swag one night. And it wasn't bloody long, I was asleep. But I woke up feeling like someone or something, something had disturbed my sleep. And then in the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of a lion. At first, it looked like to me like someone was walking along, carrying a kerosene lamp. Then another one appeared. There was something strange about them lights. You know, that yellow glow look, warm, and it was old, making me more drawn to them. They were slowly moving away from me and stopping like they wanted to follow me. So I decided to check them out. But about 200 yards into the scrub, not getting any closer, I was thinking they seemed to be moving easily through the scrub. Something told me I'd better go back which I did. I was halfway back when I stopped and turned around. The lights, or one of them, had followed me back. The other one just seemed to hang back a bit. Seems like it was just waiting, gently swaying from side to side. Then both of them rose higher off the ground and took off at a great speed into the night, leaving me alone. It took me a while, but at last I fell asleep. The next day, I spoke to one of the older stockmen. I told him what had happened, and he just looked at me said, well, young fella, you unlucky fella, them Min Min lights nearly got you. It was a while back and another fella went missing. We tracked him for about a mile and then nothing, nothing, no tracks, nothing, just disappeared. Yep. You one lucky fella. And you know, even today, modern science still has no explanation, only theories. 
the Aboriginal people out there, they're the spirits of our old people coming back, watching over them, watching over the land and their country. I camped out in the scrub one night, charging up a few King Browns laying empty by my side, and half a flag and I'm clutching and shaking hands, trying to get a drag out of a bumper I found in my pocket, and pissed off with myself for losing a pouch of tobacco. A little fall earlier while taking a leak, I reckon. It was a cold night, and a fire got out. Belly a flame and coals are smoking away. Got to get up and throw some wood on that fire, I'm thinking, and find that tobacco. Thought I'd just have another swig on that flag and first. When crack, bang, the lights went out. Next thing I know, I'm laying flat out on my back, looking up into the blue sky. I'd come to. And the conclusion, I'd been hit. By who, what, or why, I had no idea. Slowly, very slowly, I stood up. Bastards! My boots were gone. My new bloody boots. Shit. I can see her face now. Scruff! That's the last pair of boots you'll get, you reckon? One pair of boots a year. You already got two. Shit. I looked everywhere. Under the log, in the fire, round the camp, in the bush, everywhere. No boots. No tobacco. So I'm sitting there rubbing the lump on the back of my head thinking, well, maybe I'll just tell her the truth. I was charging up in the scrub in the middle of bloody nowhere when I got bashed and robbed. Maybe not. Uh, then I had a thought. There's got to be tracks. That's a black fella thing. And there were tracks. I followed them into the camp, around the fire, in the fire, around the logs, and into the bush. Then I noticed something odd. Maybe this fellow was just trying to confuse me, throw me off, like he was doing some kind of dance. Two steps forward and three back and a couple sideways and someone's taking a leak here. And then I fall, well, a few. Well, bugger me, there's my tobacco. Then like a ton of bricks, it hit me. 
<laughs> These bloody tracks are mine. So I backtracked just to make sure. And sure enough, the crack I heard was the branch I was sitting on. And the bang was a long one. I hit me head on. Now, if you're wondering what happened to my boots, I found them in the boot of my car. When I found my car.
two cliffs. I see cab rock. Of sediment and sand. Stand either side of harbour at the edge of a wide brown land. And through eons time, what once was ocean sands is now the sand of the desert across this wide brown land. This once was a place whose reptiles roamed. Now fossils and time's hands. Except for the wily crocodile who switched his diet to man. Then after the reptiles came megafauna and then the age of man. Where over 500 dialects span this wide brown land. Now the people who spoke these dialects lived in tribal clans. 40,000 years and more they roamed this wide brown land, singing songs of magic and mystery and of a time where time began. And on ancient rocks and in sacred caves sprayed outlines of their hands. And then one day they saw a ship and then a white-skinned man. They didn't know it straight away. But the shit had just hit the fan. Their ships were full of thieves and their decks stained with blood and disease, with rats and fleas and mangy sheep and boars with scurvy teeth. Their eyes to greet a pristine harbour shore. There was rogues and tramps and vagabonds, profane and sane and slaved, heard shouts of Warra Warra go away, a settlement they made. And in a land full of abundance, they toiled, starved and paid for crimes, mostly misdemeanours, until their dying days. An infusion of villains and felons trading in rum and gin for bushland, harbour, shore and women as they settled themselves in. And when negotiations failed, diseases worked instead with the English flu and pox, leaving many tribesmen dead. A clash of tribal waves and a corrupt British law. With their guns and chains and leather whips never seen before. Across, across this wide brown land. As I lay back and watch the smoke swirl up through the bone, branches of the mallees and disappear into the dark, cold night, I poke the fire. And sparks fly, popping and hissing, scattering a mob of fireflies like a flock of cockatoos. 
time stands still as I stare into the burning coals. Brilliant hues of colours, blue, green, red, orange and yellow. And as the fire grows dim, the night creeps in. I get this feeling like someone or something is out there in the darkness, lurking in the shadows, watching me. I try and cast these thoughts aside. And then I remember that story that old fella told me about this place. I can still see him sitting there by the fire, lost in his thoughts, shadows and smoke dancing across his weathered face. This, this is that story. Yuri, the hairy man, he said. I seen him. Wild creatures, six to seven, eight foot tall, covered from head to toe in hair. Way back when I was a boy, I was with the old man and Billy boy, dad's dog, camped in the Pilliga. I remember later that day while wandering through the scrub, we came across a small clearing with a huge shelter built from trees, bark and branches. Billy Boy had his back up snarling and growling. Something was bothering him. Dad come in and looking not too sure about it all. Come on, boy, we gotta get. Getting dark, he said. Later that night back at camp, Wet Billy tea, baked beans and dapper. Mmm. And we settled in for the night. Dad stoked the fire and I laid back, staring up into the night sky, thinking about that day and that shelter. The wind picked up and came aimlessly through our camp, bringing with it a stench I can't quite describe. Just then, Billy Boy snarling and growling into the scrub behind us. Dad is up and yelling for Billy to stay, but he suddenly takes off into the darkness, barking and carrying on. Just then, the night was shattered by a sound I'd never forget, sending shivers down my spine. Then an eerie silence. Dad picked up a couple of sticks out of the fire and held them out in front of him trying to see into the dark, yelling out, Billy boy, Billy boy. Just then, a huge figure, silhouetted by the night sky and horizon, stood, turned and disappeared into the darkness. We sat by that fire all night, keeping it going till first light. Dad told me to pack up camp and wait till he got back. Heading to where Billy Boy took off. Not long after I'd finished packing up, Dad came back alone. And then in his hand he had Billy Boy's collar covered in blood. Dad never said a word. He loved that dog. And with tears in my eyes, we headed home in silence. I've never been back to that place, ever since.
Durban. <laughs> Derpen, Munyan, Munyan. It was getting dark, and I was lost. I hadn't gone far, but I'd come to a small clearing, surrounded by us down to Mallies. And at one end, an outcrop of rocks, boulders and creeper vines. 
This, I thought, would be a good place. Camp the night and head out at first light. I settled in, laying back, leaning up against her, one of the smaller boulders, watching the flickering flames just casting shadows that leapt and danced over the rocks and boulders disappearing into the darkness. And every now and then, I'd get this feeling like I'd been here before. I don't know. It was a troubled sleep, which I knew had something to do with this place. Then sometime in the night, I was woken by a sound, like a tap, 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 scrape, 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 scrape. Tap, 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 scrape, scrape. What was that? There it is again, tap, 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 tap. I sat up, and there by the fire, crushing ochre on a flat rock and scraping it into a cooler man with water. An old man sat. I asked him who he was and what he was doing here. He didn't seem to notice me. He just kept on tapping and crushing the ochre. Suddenly he stopped, stood up, and walked over to the rock face, which earlier had been covered by creeper vines and thyme. He placed his hand flat up on the rock, spreading his fingers wide, and then from his mouth a spray of white ochre sprayed over his hand in the rock. Then with the ochre still running down his chin and beard, he looked straight at me and he smiled. He spoke to me in this language I didn't really understand and yet I understood. And in a blink of an eye he was gone. I awoke in the morning to the sound of the birds in a brand new day and thinking of that, that that vivid dream I just had or was it and as I stood I turned to where that old man had stood in my dream and I walked over to that rock face now covered in creeper vines and thyme and slowly started to peel them away from the rock face. And there, ever so faintly, was the outline of the old man's hand. Then I remembered what he'd said. You're not lost, boy. You home. I've been back to that place a few times over the years and I'll tell you what, I've had the best sleep. <laughs>